Hello everyone, Foxy here, and welcome to Mostly Mental. I'm here today in New York City visiting one of my favorite places, the National Museum of Mathematics, better known as MoMath. When you walk into the museum, the first exhibit you see is this one. At the center of the room, there are two tricycles sitting on top of a weird bumpy platform. If you look closer, you'll notice they aren't ordinary tricycles at all. The wheels are square. But if you get on one and start pedaling, you'll find that it's still a pretty smooth ride. How is that even possible? Shouldn't you feel a jolt every time the square turns? Clearly, the curved shape of the floor is important, but what's really going on here? What does it even mean to say that a round wheel rolls smoothly on a flat surface? Well, we don't want the axle bouncing up and down, so the center needs to be at a constant height. With a circular wheel, every point's the same distance from the center, so it doesn't really matter which end is up, the axle's always one radius above the ground. With a square, though, we don't get that. When the wheel is on its edge, like here, the center is at one height. But when the wheel rotates up to its corner, the center is at another. And in fact, if we trace out the path the center follows, we're going to get a series of quarter circular arcs. That's not going to be a smooth ride at all. So how would the road need to be shaped to accommodate a square wheel? Well, there are a few constraints we need to satisfy. First, as we just said, the axle needs to stay at a constant height. So no matter where this wheel is along the road, its center must stay along a horizontal line. Next, the wheel is lying on the road without passing through it, so its side must be tangent to the ground. And finally, at any moment, the point of contact is the center of rotation. The wheel is rotating around it. And for any rotating thing, the movement is perpendicular to the radius. So the center, which is moving horizontally, must be vertically above the point of contact. Now that we understand the problem a bit better, let's put some equations to it. To keep things simple, let's say that the center of the square always stays at height zero. And the nearest points on the ground, when the side of the square is horizontal, will be one unit away, which means the square must have side length two. Now let's look at the square at some point during its rotation. The center will be some distance above the intersection point. Let's call that y. And the perpendicular from the center to the side will have length one, since it's just this distance here. And as we said a moment ago, the side of the square is tangent to the ground, which means the slope of this line must be the derivative of the curve at this point. In other words, for every one unit over, we have to go dy dx up. And then by the Pythagorean theorem, this side here must have length square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. But hang on a second, this and this are both vertical lines, which means by alternate interior angles, these two must be the same. And then these two are right angles, and these both have length 1. So by side angle angle congruence, these two triangles must be congruent. And so the hypotenuse of both must have the same length. In other words, y equals the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared. Now we have a differential equation to solve. 
Isolating the derivative, we get the square root of y squared minus 1 is dy dx. And this is separable. So we can put the x's on one side and the y's on the other, which gives us dx is dy over the square root of y squared minus 1. And then we can integrate both sides. On the left, that gives us x plus a constant. And on the right, if you remember your list of obscure integrals from calculus class, that gives us the inverse hyperbolic cosine of y. If, like me, you don't remember that, here's a brief derivation. Pause the video and read through it. Then solving for y, we get y is the hyperbolic cosine of x plus c, which means each of these bumps is a hyperbolic cosine curve where the constant c gives us the position of the peak. And the curves are all facing downward because y is the distance below the center of the square. So there you have it. Each side of a square will roll freely along a hyperbolic cosine curve. And chaining together these curves for each side, we get a surface like this one, where a tricycle can ride smoothly. The hyperbolic cosine actually shows up in another interesting place. It's the shape of a hanging chain or rope, the catenary curve. Why do we get the same shape? I'll leave that as an exercise for you. I'd love to see your proofs in the comments below. Once again, a huge thanks to MoMath for helping me film this, and to Lance for agreeing to ride the tricycle on camera. If you're ever in New York and want to play with some fun math, you should definitely stop by. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you again soon.